Welcome back to Sailing Kajalpa. This week we have some very exciting news. All right, let's get into it. We're an Australian family that set off on an adventure of a lifetime. We hope these little videos make you smile and inspire you to chase your dreams. Subscribe to join us and our travels as we share our life on the sea. Good morning everyone, before we get into the video, I'm going to drink my mud water. Mud water is a coffee alternative, if you don't know, we love our mud water on board Catalpa. This lifestyle, you really need to stay focused and alert, and on top of things some of the time. Sometimes we run on very little sleep, and we do not drink coffee on board, we drink mud water. The great thing about this, it has less caffeine than coffee so that when you are doing night watches and if you do have a mud water, you are able to fall asleep without staying awake because of all the coffees that you've had to drink. So you actually recover really well, it helps you stay focused without the jitters, it's really good for your brain and it's good for your immunity. There are so many benefits to drinking mud water if you too would like to try. The link is on the screen and in the description down below. I hope you have a beautiful day, let's get into the video. We have some very, very exciting news. No, we're not splashing today. As much as we want to go back in the water and head off, and go sailing even though it's hurricane season right now we've got a really incredible opportunity and we reached out to a company that we worked with on Catalpa One the team is so amazing and we chatted with them last night and we are going to re-rig Catalpa Two it's a big job it's been on the list of the to-dos but now it's been made possible through a company called Hammer. They're back in Australia. We worked with them originally on our first boat back in 2017 and we're gonna do it again. But this time we're gonna share the whole process with you. So if you've got questions and you want answers, now's the time. We're gonna be working with our rigger. We're gonna go from the ground up. So we're gonna be doing the chain plates. We're gonna be doing the whole lot. We're stepping the mast and we're gonna check every single fitting and take you along for the ride and show you exactly what needs to be done to this rig to make it blue water worthy of crossing oceans. So excited, yes! Let's re-rig Catalpa 2 so we can go sailing and cross oceans and we won't be limited anymore. That's it, this is like one of the last jobs that we need to do on the boat to make her seaworthy and we couldn't be more over the moon. So thanks Hammer. Just gonna get a basic rough measurement of everything so we can do some sort of estimation with shipping from Australia. I'll stop flapping my gums. I'm going to get up the mast. Let's get some measurements and get this project underway. I'm just about to go up. People go up in these with a single line. I personally like two lines attached and if I'm working in a certain area, I've just got a safety line that I tie around and tie myself off when I'm working. Pretty much today, we're just going to be going over the whole rig and just getting some basic measurements. So I do have some verniers here if I need to measure some pins and so on. Uh, I've got my phone with me to take some pictures. I've also got a camera here. That I'll take some footage of pretty much every component on there so we have a bit of an idea what we're working with. It all looks reasonably good, but there's a, just a little bit of corrosion, which is so typical with aluminium and paint and the similar metals, but I didn't see any cracking and it all looks pretty good. I think once we step the mast, yeah, there'll be a few little fittings here and there that'll need replacing, but maybe a couple of pin sizes that are, are incorrect just for smaller stuff. All in all, it's a start. We've got some rough lengths to see what sort of we're working with and the fittings that we're working with, and we'll go from there. And now we're onto the mizzen. We're a catch, which means we have two masts, a main mast and a mizzen mast that is smaller. These measurements are just to get a quote on how much the standing rigging will cost to ship to us. Dad took the tape measure up and we took the measurements from the deck. While he was up there, he had a good inspection and took photos for the team at Hemmer. And we'll now be able to get a rough calculation on what we have all up. Today we're going to start in preparation for getting ready to step our mast, 
and get ready for our new rigging. We have our rigger flying in in a few days, so we're just going to try and do a little bit of preparation. We've only got our rigger for the day just to measure up and to step the mast. So we're going to try and make the most of that time and go over the whole rig and make sure there's no hidden faults anywhere that we can pick up along the way. We've just been waiting all morning for the wind to drop so we can drop our sails, but it's not really playing ball with us today. So we're just going to start, maybe take the stay sail and maybe the mizzen down first and just see how the wind goes. So we're going to put some penetrating oil around all our turn buckles. We're going to make sure all of our turn buckles are turning. Come the day where we're going to step the mast, we're ready to drop. We'll remove the booms, boom vangs. We had to remove the mizzen sail and boom vang so we could remove the mizzen boom, which surprisingly was pretty easy. Team. You guys are the best. Look at that. Boom number one is off. And we've got to bring the main boom down. We're only found ready to go. As you can see, we're planning on going back in the water and it did not happen. We did not plan for this rigging to be done now, but we are super grateful that it can be. Look at all this rigging up here. It's all old. It's all very possible that it could fail and it's all gonna be new. We are stoked. This time last year we were doing the bottom of the boat and now we're gonna be doing the top of the boat. We've got a little bit of mast work to do. That radar we put up, it's coming back down. We'll actually just remove that again because uh, we don't want that damaged in the lift. We do have masthead instruments and lighting, so there'll be a lot of wires disconnected at the base of the mast. That'll be an inside job. One of the last tasks was getting rid of the wires that are running to the mast. It's just like a lot of the wiring on this, it's not how I would have it. It's pretty complicated for what it needs for masthead instruments and um, spreader lights and so on. So. The main sort of power source comes under here. It's also operated from the switchboard, from this panel, and also at the helm. So there's like three switches just to control the navigation lights, which I'm gonna simplify it because I'm pretty happy with just to switch them on at the panel and it just makes troubleshooting a lot easier instead of having three different connections throughout the boat. So this will be going this will just all be simplified. Obviously we're having the mast off and you don't generally have the mast off a lot so we will replace the wires. They're probably 30 years old or so. We'll replace and just simplify. But yeah, I'm just writing down, just getting an idea of what we've got here to work with um, before I start disconnecting. And then I've just been running the multimeter on just to find out which wires are which. There's voltage at like 11 point something volts which is either saying there's an old wire or bad connection or something so it's one of these ones that yeah we'll get right replace a few wires replace some terminals and just obviously check it all it's an important part of the boat you do want your navigational lights and spreader lights and all that to be working so a little bit of uh, rewiring going on here and tidying I don't know if I'd call it help but um he does try and uh, get in there and help me, but playing's not helping. We need somewhere to put our mast once we step it. So I've gone around the yard, I've found these three absolute solid, overly solid, sawhorses, trestles, whatever you want to call them. Uh, I've got three of them here. This is going to be for the main mast. Um, I also found this on the ground. I've just gurneyed it down and cleaned it up. I'm going to cut this. And that's going to be the tops for these and that way we can rest the mast on there, clean it up, give it a paint, do whatever we've got to do without scratching it all up. And we still have a mizzen to think about so I'm probably going to need to find a couple more trestles or make them. They're pretty limited around the yard, there's a few masts down at the moment so hence all the trestles are used. It's getting late now but it's a nice time to work because it's been so hot today. So this is one of the little tasks. I'm gonna rip this down now and uh, get into it.
First, we remove the sunshade. Before removing the main boom, we remove the main sail, and yes, we only just put it on. And because there was a bit of wind, we unfurled it onto the deck for ease. That afternoon, just on sunset, the wind was light enough that we could get our headsail off. We couldn't fold them very well on the deck, so we took the sails up to the cruiser lounge here at the boatyard to fold them neatly so we could put them away. With all the sails and boom bangs removed, we could now take off the main boom. And as this was bigger than the mizzen, Dad rigged up some lines to make it possible to lower off the boat and safely to the ground with just the four of us. The uh, main boom is down, came down very easily. Lee project managed that very well, got us to do everything. No one got hurt and the boom is in one piece. That's all that matters. So now we have no booms on the boat. They're both on the ground. We've got all our sails down. We're gonna go and they're a bit of a mess at the moment trying to tidy them up on the boat. We're gonna take them up into the loft, into the air con. Give them a bit of a clean and fold them up neatly and put them away because they're not going to be needed for the next couple of weeks. Get them out of our way so we can work our way around and nothing's in the road for when we drop the rig. So we're just, again, all we're doing is just getting preparation done before our rigger gets here. Trying to make it as smooth and efficient as possible because we really get down, get, get all this down on the ground and get it all measured up and get him to inspect everything. We're on track, we've got plenty of days ahead of us but we're just trying to get it all done now. We've got a week or just nothing on the day is going to slow us down. It's about a week before the rig comes and a week before we drop the mast. We want to do measure the rigging, drop the mast all in the one day so making everything very easy for the preparation so Taj is just pulling out the cotter pins of the rigging so that we can check that they turn and come off easy and well that's what's happening here on Catalpa. Today's task was just to label all uh, the stays at the moment obviously we know the rig is pretty much in tune so therefore we'll put some tapes around where the rig is set at the moment and we'll also tape the names of what they are lowers uppers intermediates um, and so on just to make life easier for the rigger and once we get the rig on the ground we know which wire is which. Yeah, we're just labelling at the moment and then we'll put a tape around here and that will pretty much show where the rig was set. So when we do our pin to pin measurements, when the rig is on the ground, we'll know we'll be very accurate and the amount of play that we have in the rigging when it comes will be the right amount to tune it up. I haven't actually turned all the turnbuckles, I'm going to give them one more soak in penetrating oil and just make sure everything moves so when the rigger gets here um, we can undo the rig properly and know that it's not all seized up. Pretty much just a waiting game now, wait for the rigger and we do have a couple of boats that have just moved in front of us. I have spoken to the yard, I'm a bit concerned, I've got two cats in front of us at the moment. So these things take time to move so I'm just going to have to be on their case about getting them out of the road. The rigger booked in for him to come up from Puerto Vallarta. We don't want any delays. Lots of other little jobs to do, so at least we're ready. That's the main thing. Don't try this one at home. Don't want anyone to get anything in their eyes. We're just halfway through uh, loosening all these turnbuckles and 
it's out of gas, but this is full. So this is this is the stuff I use on everything. Penetrating oil, it works a treat. But it's pretty much full, but it's not working. So what I'm gonna do, I don't like being wasteful, it was literally a full can, but it's just lost its gas. It's been sitting on the boat for a while. I'm gonna get a gasless bottle. I'm gonna go the manual way. Alright, this afternoon Lee's just going back up. You can just see his feet disappearing. <laughs> He's just going back up the mast and taking down the radar that we only installed not very long ago. <laughs> but we're taking it down so it doesn't get damaged in the removal of the mizzen. Just taking all of this off while Dad's up the mast. Taking the radar off. That should be all the jobs before we take the mast down. Okay, so today I'm going up the mast. This is the second time someone's going up the mast in the last two days because we are pulling through the radar cable that we just put up, but now we've got to pull it back through because we are taking off the mast in two days. So, got to go up, let that all come out, and then we should be good. That's one of the last things we need to do before the mast come down. It's time to go up. Okay, so tape it up, spray it up, and those two wires hanging out of the spreaders where the lights are, yeah. just pull them on both sides, make sure they're like pulled. They should even, they may even be, or just make sure they're pulled a little bit. So we're just doing our final preparation for getting ready to um, step the mast. Behind us over here we've got three good sized big steel trestles and they'll be for the main mast. And I've just gone down and got like 60 bucks worth of timber. We're going to screw all these together and make up some more um, little sawhorse stools for the mizzen. We've got seven trestles to do both masts so that should be enough. Well, it's Wednesday today, our rigger flies in tomorrow and we're stepping the mast on Friday. So. All goes to plan, we should have it down and uh, on the ground and measured up. That's our saw horses, they're pretty rough but they're going to do the job. It's just to hold the mast on or the mizzen on. We've got four of those to make and we should be good to go. Just thanks for watching and the next video we will be stepping the mast, putting them on these little saw horses and having a bit of an inspection and a measure up. So we'll see you on that one. Cheers.